Hi folks, St. Paul Steam here and uh, today we're uh, tinkering with the uh, solar engine actually so no steam involved. A lot of people get these and uh, they're discouraged by them right off the bat because uh, the instructions say uh, light the flame and with a flick of the wrist it'll take right off and go roar to life. Well that's not true with these engines. They're very nice engines but they take a little bit of prep work and uh, with a, hopefully with a little bit of instructions I'm going to give you it'll be a really good runner for you. Um, this is a cool engine now and they say you can just light it up, flick it and go. First thing you're going to want to do is that flame. You're going to want to get it right over the entrance to that intake port right there. And uh, I'll flip it over here while it's cold. You're going to see that it they don't take off. Now going back and forth like that, that's not going to hurt it. Actually it'll warm it up a little quicker. And you'll see that it doesn't take off and most of them don't. Now, one thing to make sure is this little slide, that little carbon disc or whatever that is, this little slide, that it completely covers the hole in the closed position and in the open position it's completely clears the hole. And you can hear there's a little suction sound there, that's good. I got this one in yesterday and it wasn't a good runner. And there's a little metal, it's just a little metal tang right here easily bent so be real careful with it but you can bend it put a little more pressure against it to make it seal better and you can also bend it forward backwards a little bit so it uh, clears and covers the hole like it should just suction right there okay and uh, I'll talk about it a little later but the the flame wick the adjustment is very important you can see I've got very little of that flame out I don't want a big gnarly flame it doesn't need that It'll pull in what it needs. <clears throat> and of course, you'll want to oil it in all the proper places. And there's an oil port right there, right there. I put a little bit on that bearing right there. And I put a little bit right there. And a little bit on the slide on both sides and I work it in. Work it back in. Never, and I mean never, put oil in the piston bore area. Right here. That's never an oil area. You don't even want oil close to that area. Because what it'll do, like this one I got yesterday, when I tried to run it, the hotter I got it, the less it wanted to run. It never did run, and I'll explain that in a minute. And I use a powdered extra fine graphite. Let's see, I gave almost four and a half dollars for this, but it's enough to last me for the rest of my life, probably. But it's extra fine, and that's, that's really what you want. And uh, one thing I did to this, if you want to really super fine tune it, and they give you the Allen wrenches, all you got to do is take that one Allen wrench out, pull that uh, cylinder out of the bore, and there's one ring. It's actually a groove in the piston. And what I'll do is I'll tip this up on end and pull it so that the piston and the groove are just barely out of the bore where the uh, groove is right there. And I put a little bit of graphite around the, the rim there and kind of tuck it into that groove on the piston. That way you can pack it a little bit and it'll last a long time. Hope I didn't make that sound complicated because it's really not. Okay, let me set this back in there. <clears throat> okay, we're back. And lastly, it's very important not to overfill this little container. You don't want it above the bottom of that stem right there because if you do, it's going to leak out and... Believe me, you'll have a fire and it'll cover the table and go all over the place. So you don't want that. So uh, make sure you only fill this about halfway and that's plenty enough to run. Okay, and one thing I do, and I did, they just don't talk about it, but I have a, uh, this is a paint stripper. A hair dryer would work, but this is a lot more powerful. This is a paint stripper. And I heat the cylinder up for about 30 seconds is all it takes with this paint stripper to get this big chunk of brass warm enough to run. I suppose a hairdryer would work as well, but you'd probably have to double the time because this is a really intense heat. It doesn't take that much. So I always count about 30 seconds and I'm not counting now. Heat it all the way around. Brass will disperse the heat 
in a little while. cylinder out of the piston out of the bore you can always just put graphite on a q-tip and get the piston all the way inside and then just use graphite and just run it around as far as you can get in there and coat that cylinder bore real well all right now okay let's get some fire to it and then let's adjust it right over the opening and the wick adjustment is very important and then there's a sweet spot you'll be able to play with the uh, this little canister once it gets running and really get it revving. Let's give it a go. Like I said that's not hurting it. You see how it just went from going back and forth to kicked over on its own? I'm gonna let it warm up for about a minute. And then we'll start playing with the adjustment of the flame. That's not a bad speed, but it can do much, much better. It'll get better. Now let's play with the flame just a little bit. Keep your hands low. Right now I'm getting the flame a little bit closer to the port. Very small movements. Because it takes a while for the, and these are not powerful links, it takes a while for the speed to kick up to that big heavy flywheel. And when you got it right, or better, you can tell that the speed will pick up. Until it gets fully warm, it's only going to go so fast. So don't get disappointed. I'm discouraged by that. That's, this is part of the fun with these engines. Getting that flame in that sweet spot just right. some of you folks. I know it's running long, so uh, have a good day and hope you enjoy it. Goodbye now.